Now for our first topic here in Unit 2, we're going to start talking about algebraic numbers. And of course to understand algebraic numbers, we need to understand the concept of a variable. And I do realize that most of you have had algebra already, so you're relatively familiar with a variable, but I want to make sure you understand exactly what a variable is. A variable is actually any symbol that is used in place of a number. Now we, we typically use letters. X is commonly uh, the one we use, X, N, Y, um, common ones, but any letter and any symbol. We could use the pound sign, the dollar sign, anything that's not a number um, that we could use in place of a number. You could use a picture, you could use a, a heart or a cross or a cat's face, whatever you want, anything that you would use in place of a number. Now there are a lot of different uses of a variable. First, a variable can be used to define a rule. For example, um, those who have had algebra may have heard the commutative property for addition. A plus B is equal to B plus A. In a rule like this, those variables, of course, we have the variables a and b, they can be any number. They can be 4, they can be 72, negative 18, um, 3 times the square root of 7, 6.4238. Any number you can put, you can think of or imagine can go in there. In fact, it even works for the complex numbers or imaginary numbers. Another application for variables, formula. Um, this happens a lot um, in machining, in manufacturing, areas, geometry, there's all sorts of formulas. And we might have well, the area of a trapezoid is one half times the big base plus the little base, the height. There's a formula. Now in a formula like this, those variables can take on any number within some sort of a natural range. Well, I say just a natural range because each formula might have a different natural range. I'm here talking about the area of a trapezoid Obviously, those numbers can't be negative. You don't have negative distances. What we're talking about there, little b would be the top, big b would be the length of the bottom. They're parallel. H is that perpendicular distance between them. But other than the fact that they can't be negative, they can be any other value. Typically, in this case, the restriction that little b has to be smaller than big b. And so we look at that natural situation that defines that natural range, and we draw those numbers out. So for one of the, the cases of that natural situation, we might have that little b equals 8, big b equals 24, and h equals 10. So we would replace variables in that formula with the numbers that they're defined by that situation to have, those values. So area equals one half times, big B is gonna be replaced by the value of 24 in this case, plus little b will be replaced by the value of eight, times h is gonna be replaced by the value of 10. And now here we see that big A is alone on the left side of the equal sign. 
So the other side of the equal sign is all numbers. This is just an order of operations problem. We now simplify that using our order of operations. So we will do what's in the parentheses first, adding the 24 plus 8, giving us 32. Now that parentheses has been reduced to a single number, so I can take out the parentheses. Remembering I have to double check to make sure the parentheses is not doing anything else. And here it is. It's actually a multiplication. So I put in multiplication on both sides of the parentheses. That's 1 half times 32 times 10. And now I keep reducing. Well, all that's left here is multiplication, so I'm going to proceed left to right. So 1 half times 32 is 16. And finally, 16 times 10, 160. This is only one case. I could draw a completely different trapezoid. This is little b. Let's say little b equals 5. Big b equals 17. Now we have to define H law of filter, and we might say H equals 12. And we could go through that same process. Now we would go back to that same formula, but now we have different values for big B, little b, and H. We put them in and we go through that process again. So in that case where it's being used, where we use our variables in a formula, the variables can take on any number within that natural range of that situation. And if there's several cases of that situation, they're going to take on numbers. I won't run through these numbers here because I'm going to assume you guys are, are capable of plugging them in and doing the order of operations. Well, the next application that we can use for them is called an unknown. In an unknown, it actually has a specific value, and only one of them in most cases, we just don't know it. And in those cases, we can figure out that specific value. We just have to go through that process. And these cases typically look like this. We might have 3x minus 2 equals 31. x here, my variable, has a value. There's only one value that can go in there for x. We just don't know what it is. Now, we can figure it out from the situation. And we will come back to that. This is something we'll work on more. Um, either at the end of class today or next week, depending on how time permits here. Our third, or sorry, not third, our fourth application of a variable is the one that you've probably worked with the most in algebra, other than this one. I mean, this is a, a pretty common one, solving the equations. But it is as a place value. I've been thinking, what do you mean as a place value? Well, this is really polynomials. So, you've done a lot with polynomials, but you've probably never had anybody define what the structure of the polynomials really mean. And to really define that, we need to go back to our whole numbers again and define the place values. So we, we define these place values as ones, tens, hundreds, one thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, and then millions, ten millions, and, and on up. But if we look at them, we saw some basic powers of ten. Ten to the zero is one. Demonstrate. Don't recall. 10 to the power of 0 gives us a 1. 
Well, 10 to the power of 1 is 10. Anything to the power of 1 is itself. 10 to the power of 2 is 100. 10 to the power of 3 is 1,000. 10 to the power of 4 is the 10,000. 10 to the power of 5 is 100,000. And if we kept going, of course, 10 to the 6th would be a million. 10 to the 7th would be 10 millions, and so on. Our place values are just powers of 10. This is why it is referred to as a base 10 or decimal number system. Deci means base 10. It's called the base 10 or decimal number system because the place values are all exponents with a base of 10. And we saw it back in the first week. Um, if we have a number like 327, that's an abbreviation. The full form of that number is really 300s and 210s, 7 ones. Now, we don't have to write out the words. We could actually write this. Three instead of hundreds, just times 10 squared. Plus two tens, instead of writing out the word tens, just two times 10 to the one, or just 10. We don't have to write the power of one there. Plus seven, well, we could write out one instead of times ones, 10 to the zero, or usually we just leave it blank. If there's no name there that is implied, that is the ones place or 10 to the zero place. When we look at a whole number written like this, and then start looking at our polynomials, the connection is a little more obvious. We see polynomials written like this. 5x squared plus 7x plus 2. We can see here now, instead of having place values of 1s, 10s, 10 squareds, then, of course, 10 to the thirds would be the thousands and counting up. Here we have place values of, this is the ones still. You don't write it in, but x to the power of 0 would still be a 1. This is the x place value. This is the x squared. And we'd have the x third and x to the fourth on up. So the structure of our polynomials is the same structure we have in whole numbers. Now, there are some differences. One of those differences is in a whole number, either every digit's positive like that, or every digit would be negative. Negative 248, well, that's a negative 200s, and a negative 4 tens, and a negative 8 ones. Every digit's negative. Whereas in an algebraic number, we could have. 7x squared minus 3x plus 9. Each individual digit can be positive or negative on its own. Here we see we've got one negative digit in the middle and the other digits are positive. One of the other differences, of course, is our algebraic numbers are always written out in this full form um, because well, sometimes the place values um, bring in a second variable. Something like this, 2x plus 4y plus 5. Um, we have two variables in there. We've changed the names, changed the place values. So it doesn't quite fit perfectly into that same little format as our whole numbers. And final, the final difference is in our whole numbers, the largest digit we can have in any place value is 9. Otherwise, we carry over. Well, in algebraic numbers, we don't carry. So we can have... 7x to the third minus 18x squared plus 5x plus 21. You can see here, I can have more than one digit in the x squared place value, or more than one digit in the ones place value, um, because there is no carrying in algebraic numbers. So when we go to do operations with our algebraic numbers, if I have something like 
8x squared minus 5x plus 3 plus 3x squared plus 9x minus 8. Now, first of all, we see the parentheses there. Here, the parentheses are not in closing symbols because there's nothing that can be done inside either one of those. They are just like we had with the negatives. We use the parentheses to separate the negative to, to specify that that's a negative number. Here, the parentheses are specifying that this is a single number with three digits, and this is another single number with three digits. We are adding here. Just like with whole numbers, we can set this up and add by lining up the columns. 8x squared, negative 5x, positive 3 ones. We put our 3x squared under our 8x squared, our positive 9x under our negative 5x's, and our negative 8 ones under our positive 3 ones. And we are adding down our columns here. And so we do have to work with the negatives. That's one of the tricky things about working with algebraic numbers. Um, but it's just the same as with, with whole numbers, pretty much. So 3 plus negative 8, positive 3, negative 8, that makes a negative 5. Negative 5x and positive 9x, well, we have negative 5, positive 9, that's a positive 4x. We keep the same name. 8x squared plus 3x squared, well, 8 plus 3 is 11. And again, we keep that same name of x squared. So you can see, other than having to always write everything out in expanded form, and the fact that individual digits can be negative, it's the same process as adding whole numbers. Subtracting. This is where the negatives get a little confusing. We might have 3x squared minus 7x plus 4 minus 5x squared plus 6x minus 8. So when I go to set this up, just like with whole numbers, I line up the columns. So I write my 3x squared, my negative 7x, my positive 4 ones. Then the second number lines up. The 5x squared goes under the 3x squared. Positive 6x goes under the negative 7x. Negative 8 ones goes under the positive 4 ones. And I do have to remember here that I am subtracting. So as I go down the columns, I'm subtracting here. This requires maybe a little more work, a little more concentration. Positive 4 minus a negative 8. I usually write that over off to the side. 4 minus a negative 8 becomes 4 plus a positive 8. Positive 12. Remember we had said back in the first week that the negatives come back to haunt us over and over again. Here's one of those spots. Negative 7x plus, or negative 7x minus a, negative, a positive 6x. So negative 7 minus a positive 6 becomes negative 7 plus a negative 6. Negative 7 and negative 6 is a negative 13x. And 3x squared minus 5x squared, 3 minus 5 is a negative 2. So when we do our subtraction, the tricky part is just making sure Now we can also run into an issue with our addition and subtraction here. Um, if we have a missing place value. If I had 3,027 as my number, would I write that out in expanded form? I'm going to write 3,000s or 1,000s if I want to write it down. Plus, I'm not going to put in the zero hundreds. I'm going to do plus two tens, plus seven ones. Notice there's zero hundreds there, but I didn't write that out in the long form. The fact that it's missing implies that that place value was a zero. Well, the same is true with algebraic numbers. If I have five x to the third, plus two x, plus seven, 
you see that the x squared digit is missing. This implies that this is really 5x to the third plus 0x squared plus 2x plus 7. But we didn't write that 0x squared over here because the fact that it was missing tells us that it's 0. But when we go to calculate with it, especially when we add or subtract, there may be times we need to make sure we need to put that 0 in there to calculate with. Let me show you some examples. Like we might have x to the third plus 4x squared minus 7 plus 2x to the third minus 9 plus 11. So when we go to calculate with this, we start out with line things up. So we got 6x to the third, got a positive 4x squared. Now there's no x place value here, so we're going to put in a 0x and the negative 7 ones. So this 0x was not written up here, but because we're calculating with it, we put it in just in case we need it. Now the next number, we got 2x to the third, so we'll line that up with the 6x to the third. Now the negative 9x has to line up with the 0x. You'll notice that there was no x squared, so we're going to fill that place value in with a 0x squared. So we, we had to fill in the 0x squared down here to fill the x squared place, and now we see why we needed the 0x, because we had, some, had to line something up with that negative 9x. And then we just got the positive 11 ones which lines up with our negative 7 ones in the top number. We are adding here, so let's go ahead and add down those columns. So negative 7 minus 11, negative 7 minus 11, negative 7 plus negative 11, or a negative 18. This one some, a lot of students struggle with. 0x minus a negative 9x, 0 minus a negative 9 becomes 0 plus a positive 9, which is just 9, so it's a positive 9x. 4x squared minus 0x squared, well 4 minus 0 is just 4. 4 minus 0 is just 4, it's positive, so we put a plus in front of it, so it's 4x squared still. And 6x to the third minus 2x to the third, 6 minus 2 is 4, and we keep that name x to the third. Okay, so adding and subtracting, we have to have the same name. That's why we had to line up those columns. But if you remember, when we multiply or divide, we need the same name. That meant we don't have to line up columns. We don't have to line up the powers of the x's or the place values. We're going to combine the counts. Well, we did that when we added and subtracted two. But then we also combine names. And we said with whole numbers, that meant that every digit of one number could combine with every digit of the other number. Let's work our way up to that. So like with addition, if I have 5x plus 9x, I can just combine the counts, 5 plus 9 is 14, and I keep the same name of x. When I multiply, if I had 5x times 9x, well, I'd combine the counts, 5 times 9 is 45. We're multiplying now, so we combine them with multiplication. x times x is x squared. And we didn't have to have the same name. If I have 3x times 8y, it doesn't matter that those are different names or different variables. We can still combine them. 3 times 8 is 24. 
x times y is just xy. We've seen our powers and how they combine. x to the third times x to the fifth, we saw, makes x to the eighth. If we have counts in front of that, like 9x to the seventh times 5x to the fourth, we still combine the counts. 9 times 5. It's just 45. And then we also combine the names. x to the 7th times x to the 4th is x to the, remember when we multiply exponents with the same base, both of those have a base of x, add the powers. So 7 plus 4 is 11. x to the 11th. If we have more than one name, we treat each name separately. We might have 4 x to the fifth, y to the third, times seven, x to the eighth, y to the sixth. So again, we can combine the counts. Four times seven is just 28. And then we can treat each name separately. x to the fifth times x to the eighth, again, same base, so we can add the powers. 5 plus 8 is 13, so it's x to the 13th. y to the 3rd times y to the 6th will be y to the plus 6 is 9. Now let's jump up to multiple digit numbers. Something like if we had 3 times 42. We go to multiply something. Typically, what we would do is we would write the number with the most digits on top, and then multiply by the 3. 3 times 2 is 6, 4 times 3 is 12, so 2 carry the 1. This is very similar to our process to have something like 3x times 5x plus 4. Now, we've learned shortcuts for that. But we can do the exact same thing there as we did over here for our whole numbers. Put the number with the most digits on top, 5x plus 4 is a two-digit number, and the 3x on bottom, and we're multiplying. Notice I didn't worry about lining up place values. Now we can multiply. Start with the last digit. Well, there's only one digit in the bottom number. Line up with the last digit of the top number. 3x times 4 is 12x. It's positive, so we're going to put a plus in front of it. Then we do the 3x times 5x. Combining the counts, 3 times 5 is 15. Combining the names, x times x is x squared. Now we have learned the shortcut of distributing. Distributing is just a way to do this process, keeping it shorter without having to rewrite the problem. And it looks like this, 3x times 5x, that is our 15x squared that we got down here. And then 3x times positive 4, positive 12x. Notice we get the same result, just a little bit less space, we didn't have to rewrite the problem. And we just work backwards, instead of working right to left, we work left to right. But we get the same result. So even with something like this, we can write it out just like we did over here and do it, multiply it out the long way. That is the full way of multiplying it out. But since we know that distributing shortcut, let's use it. We're going to take our 7x squared times our 8x squared. 7 times 8 is 56. x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. Then we do our 7x squared times negative 5x. Well, 7 times negative 5 is a negative 35. x squared times x. Remember, that's really x to the 1. 
plus 1 is 3, so that's x to the third. And 7x squared times 3, the positive 21x. What if both numbers have multiple digits? Three x plus five times seven x plus two. We have a shortcut for this as well, but before we look at that, let me show you the long way, the full way of doing this. Just like we would with whole numbers, we write that out: three x plus two on top, or three x plus five, not plus two. That three x plus five on top. 7x plus 2 on bottom, and we are multiplying here. Just like with whole numbers, we start with the last digit of the bottom number, minus the last digit of the top number. Positive 2 plus positive 5 is a positive 10. Then we move over to the next digit of the top number. Positive 2 times 3x is 6x. Now we've combined everything with that last digit of the bottom number, so we move over to the next digit. Down here we leave a 0. 7x times 5 is 35x. Positive, we'll put plus in front of it. 7x times 3x. 7 times 3 is 21. x times x is x squared. Combine our things with the same place value. Well, this is just a positive 10. 6x and 35x is 41x. Positive, so we put a plus there. And 21x squared. This is the full process of multiplying out those polynomials. Now, of course, we have learned a shortcut. That shortcut is referred to as FOIL. And all it is is, again, a shortcut to multiply. It's almost like repeated distributing. F in FOIL stood for first. So we take the first digits of each of those numbers and we multiply them. 3x times 7x is 21x squared. Notice we had that down here. The O in FOIL stands for outside or outer. We multiply the outside digits. 3x times the 2 is a positive x. I stands for inside or inner. We multiply the inside two digits. 5 times 7x is 35x. I'm going to write that under the 6x so I remember to combine those. And then the L stands for last. We combine the last two digits. 5 times 2 is a positive 10. And just like we did with our other method, we combine the things that are alike. We've got the positive 10. 6x and 35x is a positive 41x. And the 21x squared. So that FOIL process is just a shortcut for this longer process. But it does save quite a bit of time and space. So feel free to use it if it fits. Um, if I struggled with FOIL, maybe doing it out the long way like this is a help to you. So feel free to do it that way too if that's easier for you. So division. Division is going to follow the same pattern. We have Something like 18x to the fifth divided by 3x squared. Now this looks like a fraction, but it's really a division problem. Remember we've mentioned that fractions and division problems um, can be swapped for each other pretty interchangeably. We're going to combine the counts. 18 divided by 3 is 6. Then we also combine the names. Remember when we're dividing exponents with the same base, both of those have a base of x. We subtract the powers. x to the fifth divided by x squared. 5 minus 2 is 3. That's x to the third. Just like with our multiplication, if we have more than one name, we can treat each name separately. We have 36 x to the fifth y to the seventh. Divided by 4, x to the third, y to the second. Again, we combine the counts. 
36 divided by 4 is 9. x to the fifth divided by x to the third. 5 minus 3 is 2, so that's x to the second. And y to the seventh divided by y squared, 7 minus 2 is 5. So y to the fifth. Now let's take that next step to numbers that have more than one digit. Something like 27 x to the fifth minus 36 x to the fourth plus 18 x squared. Let's divide that by 9 x squared. Remember, when we multiply, we can combine every digit of one number with every digit of the other number. The same is true for division. A division with whole numbers that many people have never seen is something like this. If I have 468 divided by 2, I can just do 4 divided by 2 is 2, 8 divided by 2 is 4, 6 divided by 2 is 3. Every digit divides out evenly by 2, so we don't have to worry about the whole long process. Well, the same is true here. 27x to the fifth divided by 9x squared. 27 divided by 9 is 3. x to the fifth divided by x squared is x to the third. 5 minus 2 is 3. Then we move to the next digit. Negative 36x to the fourth divided by 9x squared. Well, negative 36 divided by 9 is a negative 4. x to the fourth divided by x squared is x squared. And then to the next digit, 18x squared divided by 9x squared. 18 divided by 9 is a positive 2. x squared divided by x squared. Anything divided by itself is 1, so that can be 2 times 1 or just 2. You don't have to put in the times 1s there. The other way you can think of it is x squared divided by x squared. 2 minus 2 is 0. x to the 0 is just 1. So that's just saying that is the 1's place. We're not going to do a lot of multiple digit division like this in this class. Um, the only place we would see it would be um, when we get into graphing linear equations using slope and intercept form having to simplify some of those equations. But the biggest thing to, to remember here, the difference between 3x squared plus 9x minus 12 plus 3. Here, we're adding that 3 can only be combined with other digits with the same name. That's 3 ones. I can only combine it to the negative 12 ones. So the 3x squared and the 9x don't change. Negative 12 plus 3, 9. But if that were 3x squared plus 9x minus 12, Divided by 3, when we multiply or divide, every digit can be combined. So we're dividing everything here by that 3. 3x three squared divided by 3 is 1x squared, or just x squared. 9x divided by 3 is 3x, positive 3x, the plus 3. And negative 12 divided by 3 is a negative 4. Every digit has to be divided by that 3, because division, we don't need the same name. We might have 
If we look at 2x goes into 8x to the fourth, 4x to the three. Four times two is eight. X to the third times x gives us x to the fourth, and we multiply that back through. X minus one times the four x to the third, eight x to the fourth minus four x to the third. And we subtract that. Eight x to the fourth minus eight x to the fourth is zero. Negative 3x to the third minus a negative 4. Well, negative 3 minus negative 4 becomes negative 3 plus a positive 4. That's 1x to the third. Now, bring down the 5x squared. 2x into 1x to the third is a positive 1 half x squared. And we continue. Notice it's that multiplying out and repeated subtraction. Now we're not going to finish this because we don't, this, this would be a topic for an intermediate college algebra course. We're not going to get up to quite that level in here. Um, we're going to stop there. So you won't ever have to do something like this in homework or on a test. But I wanted to show you to continue that pattern how these polynomials, these algebraic numbers, are exactly like our whole number. Yeah, the same structure, same processes. They just look a little different because the numbers look a little different. Now, of course, that final use of the variable that we mentioned and didn't have time to talk about, which we'll come back to on Monday and, and use, um, is this one, where it was like 3x minus 2 equals 40. And in this case, that variable has a value. We just have to figure out what it is. And on Monday, we'll come and we'll look at how, what do these structures, these equations really mean? How are they built? How are they put together? And then when we're asked to solve them, what is it that we're really being asked? For today, there is no homework for over the weekend. I won't do that very often, but with the first test here, a lot of people need extra time to finish it up. I have only received one test, like I said. So if you've completed your test, um, please talk to your, your person at your school and, and see if they have sent it in yet or remind them to send it in to me. I try not to grade them until I have all of them or at least most of them so that I grade them all at the same time so I catch any mistakes or so that I grade them partial credit the same way on everything. And with that, you guys have a great weekend and we will see you on Monday.